This morning is kind of a little bit different. Uh, the message this morning that I am going to share with you is the most important message that I have ever shared. It's the most important thing that I have ever shared with a group of people. I would also tell you this morning that the message that I share this morning is the most important message that you'll ever hear. It's the most important thing that you will ever hear in your entire lives. Now, before you get too nervous and before you get anxious about where on earth is he going with this, I will tell you that there's a historic code word for our message this morning. And that historic code word through the ages is called good news. Good news. That's where we're going this morning is with the good news that God brings to us. But because it's a little bit of a different message, because it is so important, we're going to look at it a little bit differently than what we normally do on a Sunday morning, a little bit differently than what you're used to me dealing with. Because what I want you to do is I want you to experience the depth and the width of this passage. I want you to know how deep and how wide the things that we are talking about this morning go. And so normally what we do is normally we take one passage of Scripture and and we try to understand that passage of Scripture as well as we possibly can in our allotted time. This morning we're going to look at several different passages of Scripture, so that's going to be a little bit different. Usually we just kind of pull out two or three things that we want to emphasize from that passage of Scripture. This morning we're going to try to surround it with a little bit more than just two or three things because this passage of Scripture Scripture is so important because this message is so important. It's all connected to our discipleship pathway that we've been talking about for the last several weeks where we've said this is not the exact path that every single believer takes, but it is a fairly typical path that a believer makes. It is a logical progression on how people grow spiritually, and we are praying that this would be a year of real and meaningful spiritual growth for every person in the life of our church. And we just talk our way through taking our next step spiritually on the journey. And we, we kind of started with this idea of exploring, and we're going to talk about belief and grow and share and how we, we find, okay, where am I? Where am I right now? And what is my next step to take? Last week, we, we talked about that process of exploring leaving ourselves open and saying, God, what is it that you want to say to me? Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. God, if you're talking, I'm listening, and I'm ready to do what you call me to do, thinking and measuring and considering. This morning we move, though, to the heart of the discipleship pathway, which is the belief. To believe. This is the most important part of the entire journey. It is believing that that matters more than everything else. And so what I want us to do is I kind of want to walk through several folks in Scripture. They all happen to be in the Gospel of Luke. And and I want us to watch how they stepped up to this moment of belief. In fact, every single one of them had this point where they kind of worked through explore And they walked up to this moment of belief. Now, what I love about these passages of Scripture is that every single person's story is different. And as we'll look at them in just a moment, we're going to see that they all didn't even end up in the same place. But what I want us to get is I want us to see this whole progression of the heart of what is our message And that is to believe. Are you ready? All right, let's take a look uh, at these passages of Scripture. We begin in Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, and we're going to begin with verse 1. It says, On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little further from the land, and he sat down and he taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let your nets down for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we have toiled all night and we took nothing 
but at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and to help them, and they came and they filled both of the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they brought in their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. Our next passage is right here on the same page. Uh, We're just looking at verses 27 and 28 of this chapter. It says, After Jesus went out and he saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. The shortest sermon that we find in Scripture. Follow me. And leaving everything, he rose and he followed him. We, We move a little bit across the book of Luke to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, beginning with verse 18. And a ruler asked him, asked Jesus, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. He said, All of these I have kept from my youth. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, one thing you still lack, sell all that you have and distribute to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. But when the man heard these things, he became very sad, for he was extremely rich. Jesus, seeing that he had become sad, said, how difficult it is for those who have wealth to enter into the kingdom of God. We turn to Luke chapter 19, just one chapter over, and beginning in verse 1, it says, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because Zacchaeus was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into the sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when he saw it, they all, and when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods. I give to the poor, and, I have, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. One more passage this morning. We find Jesus on the cross in Luke 23. Luke chapter 23, beginning with verse 39. It tells us that one of the criminals who were hanged railed at Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we want to hear your word. Lord, we want to understand what it means. We want to understand the heart of it. We want to know what it means for our lives. And so, Lord, I ask that you would be so present in this room. 
Lord, I, I pray that you'd be present within me as I speak. Lord, I pray that you'd be present in the words that we put into this room. But Lord, I pray that you would be present in the lives of folks who hear this. So that they could believe. So that they will believe. We pray this in your name. Amen. So as we take a look at what is true about all five of these stories, the things that we can see from all of these passages of Scripture. I just kind of want to run through this uh, together. The first thing that I want you to know, and the first thing I want you to see, is that belief is a call for anyone and everyone. Belief is a call for anyone and everyone. When it comes to faith, when it comes to believing, there isn't a type. There are so many things that we might want to do in life or experiences that we want to have in life or so many pathways that we might want to go down in life and we kind of say, I'd like to do this. I'd like to grow up and be this. I'd like to have this experience. And somebody looks at us and says, well, you're just not really the right kind of person. You don't have the qualifications. You don't qualify for this kind of experience. I want you to see in these passages that we just read, I want you to see that there's not a type. There's not a kind of person that qualifies for belief. It is for anyone and everyone. In these passages of Scripture, what we've seen is we've seen blue-collar fishermen. We've seen white-collar accountants. We've seen people who are popular. We've seen people who are unpopular. We've seen people who are religious. We've seen people who are not religious. We've seen criminals. And that's just a sample skimming across one section of God's Word. Belief is a call for anyone and everyone. And that means all across this room today. In fact, I want to take just a moment and do just a quick exercise if you'll go with me this morning. What I want you to do is I want you to think, write down, think, memorize, whatever, just kind of process Three words that someone might use to describe you. Three words maybe that you would use to describe yourself. I'll, I'll give you a, a moment. Uh, three words that you would describe about yourself. Okay, These are your words, but just go ahead and take a moment. Think of those through. Three words. Do you have your three words? All right. Here's the thing. Whatever your three words are, that's the kind of person that Jesus calls to believe. Whatever your three words are. For every single person in this room, whatever is a description of you, whatever is your story, whatever is your background, whatever is your experience, whatever is the leaning of your life, Belief is for you. He, he, he is talking about you when he talks uh, about belief. I want you to know that belief is a call for anyone and everyone. I also want you to know that belief is an invitation to relationship with Jesus. Belief is an invitation to relationship with Jesus. I want you to see at the heart of these words, the heart of these stories, is that Jesus says, follow me. That's relationship. It's not a task. It's not a list. It's not a set of new commandments. It's not a, 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 a world system. It's not a philosophy. It's not religion. When Jesus comes to these folks as they stand there at the line of belief, what he says is, follow me. It's relationship. It's relationship. That's what belief is about. Now, for, for Jesus, there, there's a whole lot more that comes with believing. In fact, believing is more than relationship. It is redemption. It is restoration. It is forgiveness. It is empowering. It is meaning. It is purpose. It's community. It's healing. It's hope and many more things. But at the heart of it, 
It is Jesus saying, come be with me. In fact, take a look at that man on the cross. The last conversation of his life, the last, some of the last words that, that Jesus speaks. He says to that man, who obviously is a messed up person, who has no future of promises to make, he says, today you will be with me in paradise. Belief is not about religion. It's not about an organization. It's not a system. It's a relationship with Jesus. That's what believing is. I would also tell you that belief is why he came. Belief is why he came. He comes and he tells us, I came to seek and to save we love our small group Bible study classes. We, we, we love to do the fellowship things. We, we, we love lots of things. We, we, we love our church holidays, Christmas, Easter. All of those things are fantastic. But understand, the reason why any of those things exist, the reason we exist here this morning, the reason we celebrated Christmas, the reason we're going to celebrate Easter, the reason that we have the Word of God, the reason for any of those things is because Jesus said, I came to seek and to save the lost. Now think how great a word that is for somebody like Levi, the tax collector, who we don't know all of the story of Levi. Sometimes his name is Matthew. We, we don't know all the story of Levi, the tax collector. But basically the pieces that we can pull together of his story is that he chose a life that served him before it served anybody else. At great cost and the great broken relationships, he chose to build his life on greed and avarice and corruption because it worked for him. We see Zacchaeus, who seems to be like a step up or down, depending on direction that you look at it. A person who has built his life on corruption to the point that every single person in town hated him. Because he had cut all kinds of deals done harm to just about everybody that he knew in that town out of his own self-interest. And we think about the criminal that's there on the cross, and while one of the criminals wants to go down to his last breath being a sarcastic, sarcastic pain in the neck, this other guy says, what are you even talking about here? If this moment isn't a moment to help you think clearly, I don't know when you're ever going to think clearly. The criminal says, listen, we are here because we deserve to be here. We earn this spot. Truth is, they probably should have put us up here a long time ago. We're guilty. And he compares himself to Jesus. He says, I don't know this guy everything, but I know that he's not guilty. And so when Jesus says, I came to seek and the same, the lost, what an encouragement, what a word, what, what a message of hope to people like Levi and Zacchaeus and this criminal. He came for you. But just as much as it's a message of hope, it's, it's also a heads up to everybody else. Man, something gets broken. Something gets broken in us. When we see God do a blessing inside of somebody else's life, when we see God rescue somebody that we don't think deserves being rescued. In Luke chapter 19, it tells us that when Jesus said, hey, I'm going to Zacchaeus' house, the whole town gasped 
They grumbled. They were angry. How dare he go to this person's house? And that's why Jesus says, hey, fellas, just a reminder. I came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus came to take people who were broken, sinful, separated, apart from God, and to receive them into relationship and restoration and healing for their lives. That's what He came to do, to seek and to save the lost. It's a great word if you're broken and in need. It's a reminder for the rest of us. That's why Jesus came. It's why Jesus came, is to rescue people whose lives are broken, sinful, messed up. It's the reason He came, is to help unbelievers believe. Sometimes as believers, we get so frustrated with people who don't believe that we forget, wait a minute, we're supposed to help them come to the place where they believe. Belief is a call for anyone and everyone. It is an invitation to relationship with Jesus. It's the reason why He came. And belief is a rearranging of life. Belief is a rearranging of life. One of the things that, that, I, that I pointed out ahead of time is not all of these stories finish the same way. In fact, we had there in Luke chapter 18, there is the man who seems to be a good man. He, he knows the theological answers. He knows the right questions to ask. He knows the right answers to give. And, and he can go through a checklist of, of things that the Bible says to do. He says, like, I've done those. I've been doing those things. Man, my, my check marks on that go all the way back to when I was a kid. I've been doing that for a long time. And Jesus says, you're still lacking one thing. He says, you are really in love with your stuff. He says, how about you get rid of your stuff and then come follow me? And it says that this man that really liked Jesus and really was interested in Jesus and really was a, was a, a very good person, it says he walks away sad. Because even as he walks up to that line of belief, he just can't cross it. Because what Jesus is asking for is for him to rearrange his life. And he says, really what I want is I want to just add Jesus to everything I already have and leave everything else the same. Jesus says, no, no, no. I'm inviting you to relationship." and rescue and restoration. But it also means I'm going to rearrange your life. Look at the other people that we looked at in this passage of Scripture. There's uh, Andrew and Peter and James and John. They, they leave behind their, their family fishing businesses. I'm always amazed with Levi. Jesus walks up to him as he is counting tax money, as he is doing this, walks up to Levi says, follow me. Levi just walks out of his office, just walks straight. I know that some of you have thought about that, and some of you may think about that on Monday morning. I'm ready to just walk straight out of here, but Levi did. Jesus walks up and says, follow me. He walks right out. For Zacchaeus, he says, man, I think there's a little thing here. Zacchaeus says, if I've done anybody, anybody wrong, and the whole town says, you have. <laughs> he says, listen. I'm going to give away half of what I own. And if I've cheated, you have anybody, I'm going to pay it back times four. I'm going to pay it back times four. Because his life is rearranged by Jesus. And so this, this man who has had all the right answers all of his life, Jesus says, okay, you can come follow me. But understand, it's going to rearrange your whole life. And so that man walks up to that line and says, I can't do it. Walks up to the line of belief and says, I can't do it. 
here's my experience as I try to talk to people about what it means to follow Jesus, to believe, to, be, to, to become a, a Jesus person. One of the things that I want you to know, what I want them to know as I'm talking to them, as I want you to know this morning, is that following Jesus is the easiest thing you'll ever do. He's done the work. He has provided all of it. He does not give you a checklist. He does not give you a list of demands. You don't have to improve your life 7% every single year the rest of your life. You don't have to do that. In that moment, He hands you the clean spiritual bill of health and says you have moved from broken to whole, from sinful to forgiven. You know how it happens? Jesus does it. All you have to do is ask Him to do it. He does it. It's the easiest thing you'll ever do because Jesus has done it all. And yet, and at the same time, it's the most difficult thing you'll ever do because He calls on you to rearrange His entire life, your entire life, with Him at the center of your life. And for this man, he walks up to that line He says, I don't want to change who I am. I don't want to change what I have. I don't want to change the structure of my life. And so in that moment, he walks up to that line. And he walks away. Belief is the rearranging of life with Jesus at the center of our lives. I'll tell you just a couple more things here. Belief is is forever. Belief is forever. We see that there with the man on the cross. Today you will be with me in paradise. One of the things that I think we have a hard time grasping is the work that God does in our life is forever. The work that God does in our life is forever. We, we are so used to living in a temporary wor world. We, we, are, we are so used to living in a world that just doesn't last. We are so used to living for you that lasts forever because it is handled on the eternal side by the eternal God. Does that make sense? Belief is forever. And you can see I've only got room for one more space on that slide and that is the belief is a choice. Belief is a choice. I knew a guy one time that says, I always choose a seat in the back of, a plane, of the airplane. I always sit in the back of the airplane. Why, why do you sit in the back of the airplane? He says, I've never heard of an airplane backing into a mountain. I, I don't know whether an airplane's never backed into a mountain, but I know that a person has never backed into belief. A person has never backed into belief. It's a choice. It's a next step. It is a decision to move forward and say, God, I trust you with my whole life. I trust you with my whole life. It is what we literally call a step of faith. Scripture tells us that the mechanism by which we are saved is by faith. That means that there is a moment when we step from what we know into what we do not know for sure. For some folks, that step is only just a little bit. It's so close, you're pretty sure. And so that step of faith, that step of belief is just the, the, the tiniest space. But i got to tell you, you've you got to take that step. You've got to take that step. If you stand there and just look at it and say, well, it's not that far. I know it's not that far, but you still got to take the step. For others, man, whether it's your personality, whether it's your experience, whether, whether, whether it's just, I don't know. But for other folks, that, that gap, it's not here. It's here. And so part of what happens is that we spend that time exploring so that we can narrow that gap some. But I'm going to tell you, 
there's always going to be a gap. And if you're waiting for the gap to disappear, there's always going to be a gap in which you have to believe and step across that gap. Whether it's here or here or anything in between, belief means that I'm going to move from what I know, what I control, what's in my hands, And I'm going to step into what God can do. What we want to do is that we want to help you move in your spiritual life. So whether you are in a season of exploring, then then we want to help you be as effective as you can be in that exploring. But we also want to say, okay, if you've been exploring for a while, you're at that line. It's time to step in belief. One of the things that we want to do to provide a tool for you is that on the table in the foyer and at the back uh, little stand over here, we, we've got cards that kind of say, hey, I think this is where I am. I'm at share or grow or believe or explore. And, and, and we have these cards that, that can help you take that next step. And for, for believe... It means commit my life to Jesus. And here it says seek his forgiveness. That that's what Peter was doing as he fell on his knees before Jesus and said, I'm a sinner. Seek his forgiveness. That that's, that's what the man on the cross was doing, seek his forgiveness. Acknowledge the broken and sinful parts of our life. Seek his forgiveness and seek his leadership. Knowing that we're going to rearrange our lives under the agenda of Jesus. On that card, there's a QR code that takes you to a link where there's a page with a little bit more information about what it means to follow Jesus. There's a couple other belief steps that we want to help you with, and that is that once you take that step of belief, that there's a second believe step here, which is to celebrate your faith in Jesus through believer's baptism. Believer's baptism. To say, Listen, because I'm a believer, I want to announce that and I want to share that. And baptism is the way that we do that. We've got a tank right there behind us. And there's a little ceremony that we do where we celebrate a person's life being changed and transformed, buried with Jesus and raised to a brand new life. If you're a believer and you're here, but you've never taken that step of baptism, you've never been baptized as a believer, man, we would love to help you to do that. We'd love to help you to do that. You know which one of those two matters the most? The top one, the believe. That's the one that matters the most. But we want you to take that next step of baptism as well. And then the third step here is if you are a believer and, and you've identified that through baptism, then maybe you need to identify Woodland Park as, as my church, my home, my, my, my family, my team, the, the, the place that I do the mission together. This is my place. Until God moves me someplace else, this is the place that he has for me. And so really when we think about belief, the first thing is to commit your life and believe in Jesus to share that belief through baptism, and then to anchor and believe and say, this is my church. Those, those are the steps that we would want you to do. On the back of the card, it says just that. It says, I'm ready to commit my life to Christ, to believe today, to sign up for baptism, or to become a member of this church, and then we just get some information from you there. These are tools to help you take that next step. Uh, you may say, well, well, all of this stuff is stuff that I've already done. I, I've already done those things. Fantastic. Have we got some things next week to talk about? We'll talk about the steps beyond that for next week. But for this week, man, are you at that line? Walking up to that line of belief. Maybe today is the day you're supposed to cross it. And say, I believe. And I accept his forgiveness. 
and I accept his leadership over my life. We're going to pray in just a moment, then we're going to worship together. At the end of the service, I'm going to be at the back over there, and Pastor Caleb's going to be back uh, at a table. Man, come by, grab one of these cards. Talk to us. That's why we're here, not just in this moment. It's the whole reason we exist in this world is to help you with these things. Let me pray for you. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you that you have made belief possible. I thank you that you've given us someone that we can believe in. Lord, I thank you that the messed up pieces of our life don't disqualify us from relationship or belief or a future or security. So in a very real sense this morning, I don't really know what the journey is of every person who's here or really hardly any person who's here. But Lord, it's quite possible there are some folks that are standing at that line and they've never crossed that line of belief. Man, I have no idea what's held them back. They may not have any idea what's held them back. But Lord, would they take that step today to believe for all of eternity, for all of this security, the whole reason that you came. Lord, I pray that in this room today, there would be those that move to belief. I pray this in your name. Amen.